Good afternoon, DC RTV fans on the ships at sea and Baltimore. And <laughs> How y'all doing, everybody? This is the second Dave TV for the 19th of uh, March 2013. I haven't done two Dave TVs in a while. Uh, just because, hey, there's not been a lot of that, not a lot of cool news going on, but we got some more news this afternoon. Uh, around noonish, we got the word that the examiner, that uh, freebie newspaper, freebie tabloid that's published Mondays through Fridays plus Sunday, will be literally kind of going out of business as it presently exists. It's going to turn into a uh, weekly paper basically covering politics, kind of like The Hill, kind of, you know, a weekly paper with a website that's going to cover basically national politics. So it's basically being transformed from a local newspaper. And, you know, I just wanted to give you some thoughts about what I think uh, is going on. Uh, first off, we know that about, first off, we heard 30 people were going to lose their jobs. Now it's more like 90 people. So, you know, no glory, no gloating about that. You know, anybody time, anytime somebody loses their job, bad news. And you know, a lot of these people are pretty good journalists. You know, I think, you know, I think a lot of uh, the pluses, the pluses with the examiner, shall we look at that? I like the design of the paper. I really did. It was, a, it, it was certainly better designed than the Washington Post. It, it's a tabloid format. It was a quick read. The stories were up front. They, you know, most of their local reporting was pretty damn good. You know, they're covering local issues, local government issues, non-biased, solid reporting, you know, local political, local crime stuff, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. The, the Washington metropolitan area airports authority stuff and the Dulles toll road and that whole scandal. A lot of stories were broken by the examiner. And in that respect, they did a very good job. Uh, paper looked, paper physically looked good. I liked, I liked the way it was, the articles were short to the point, no jumps. Um, and, you know, in that respect, I thought they did a very nice job. Um, you know, the, the front of the paper usually had a real grabby kind of, uh, headline. And in that respect, yeah, more, you know, it's a shame we're losing the examiner. Now for the negative side of things. The negative side. Um, I live in the Reston area. There are several distribution points for the examiner in my area. And there was frequently when I didn't, couldn't find today's paper there. You know, there's the Safeway, for example, where a lot of the Safeways would carry the examiner. They had a basket there that said examiner on it. And I'd say at le lately, at least 50% of the time, today's paper wasn't in the basket. It didn't even get there. You know, uh, the Tuesday, Wednesday, the paper wouldn't be there. It'd be there Thursday. No paper Friday. No paper Sunday. No, no a couple of papers there on Monday. You know, or sometimes the papers weren't put in the basket. They were put over on the counter on the other side of the store. So, you know, you looked in the basket. There were no things in the examiner basket. But over, you know, where the other papers were on the other side of the store, there would be a pile of examiners. Or sometimes you'd be out by the street. You know, so, you know, sometimes they did get delivered, but they weren't. The guy didn't carry them in and stick them in the basket, you know, where they were the, the bin there where they were supposed to be delivered. So the paper was hard to find on a daily basis. You know, if you're an advertiser and you're putting in, you know, paying your hard earned money to put buy ads for a certain distribution, and then the distribution is just not there, I think that's probably one of the biggest problems the examiner had. That frequently it just wasn't there. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. So I enjoyed reading it when I could find it. The other thing I didn't like too much about it was that it did kind of lean to the right politically. Now, as I say many times, I have no problem with the newspaper leaning this way or that way, or or having a mix of columns, maybe heavily, a little more heavily on one side. But <clears throat> you know, sometimes, especially around the election and Obama and all that, the paper definitely had a bias. They just didn't like Obama. And that's fine, and you know, do that if you want. But the problem is, you're you're trying to sell this newspaper in a heavily lefty liberal area, you know. So that means a lot of people are just going to dismiss you right off the bat. So you know, you know, not to say you can't be that way if you want, but a lot of people are just going to immediately dismiss you because your paper is columnist wise really heavily loaded to the right. Uh, you know, take, you know, you, you pay your money, it takes your chances, right? Um, so in, in that respect, I think, you know, they, they kind of made a mistake in that 
respect. So, you know, um, I think it's sad the examiners go, you know, more the merrier. I always think anytime you have more of something, more competition, you know, more people, you know, in the mix, more different newspapers around, it's a better thing. We're looking at a market, a newspaper market in the Washington area now where the Examiner is pretty much not going to be there anymore as a local newspaper. Probably the Washington Times isn't much there anymore either. The paper, Washington Times is having tremendous problems. And, you know, it really isn't the local paper that it used to be. You know, it's kind of becoming more of a kind of what the Examiner is becoming, a national political organ-y kind of thing. You know, less and less local coverage in the in the, in the the uh, Washington Times. Fewer and fewer people paying for it. You know, the circulation is, what, a third of what it was a couple of years ago. Um, then you got the Washington Post with the paywall going up, with their dwindling circulation. It's really true. The news business is really changing. And, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of cataclysmic in many respects, you know, to see how many changes and how fast they're coming. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a possibility in a couple of years we just won't have print newspapers, you know. I mean, it is in a way a weird, an inefficient way of distributing news to, you know, cut down trees and, and have big printing plants and have trucks running and, you know, carry, you know. And I'm the old-fashioned guy. I still, you know, I still pay for my full print delivery of the Washington Post because, yes, I do like having that print paper there on my, on my uh, breakfast table every morning with my cup of tea. You know, but, uh, you know, I can see a day in the not-too-distant future where there just won't be print newspapers anymore. You know, you'll have your little tablet sitting there, and, you know, that'll be it. And you'll pay a fee, and, you, you know, there'll be certain sites that'll be free, and then there'll be certain sites where you have to pay a fee. And, and you know, get your, get your um, if you want to you know, read more than a couple articles per week in the Washington Post, you'll pay your $24 and, and you'll have access, free access, or not free access, but you'll have complete access to the Post website. But it's going to be a whole different world, you know. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, again, the Washington Post is on a, on a footing now with, you know, we have local TV stations and WTOP and stuff like that and patch sites. And they're all going to be competing with each other on that respect on the cyber war field, the you know, cyber field. But the print newspapers are pretty much quickly moving out. It's it's sad. You know, I look I look here in the rest in Virginia area, and we don't even have a full time you know a, a local bookstore anymore with Barnes and Noble closing. You know, and uh, you know soon we'll we, you know we won't have a place to buy CDs, and we won't have a place to buy DVDs, and we won't have print newspapers anymore. It's kind of for a for a older dude like me, it's kind of a little bit scary. But uh, as long as you got the power and you got the internet, <laughs> and you pay your your cable bill and or whatever, pay your Wi-Fi, get your Wi-Fi or whatever. I guess we'll always have you know. Some sort of news out there. I don't know, but it's uh, it's a rapidly changing world, and it's amazing to see how fast things are changing, and uh, you know the Washington Post even, and how fast that newspaper is rapidly becoming losing its local uh, capabilities and becoming a national kind of an organ. I don't know what's going to happen with local news. I mean, you look at the Manassas Journal Messenger going out of business. You know, you look at all these newspapers that cover local news rapidly declining. You know, um, you know we need a viable journalistic press out there to keep our politicians in check and if we lose that you know is it, is it going to be enough to have an army of bloggers you know covering uh, politics um, screaming and yelling and shouting you know um, I don't know it's going to be real interesting to see what the future brings but um, I do think it's sad that the examiner is going away you know Philip Anschutz he's the uh, owner of the examiner and I, yeah, I think one of the reasons he bought the examiner or at least bought what was left of the journal newspapers and turned it into the examiner was because he had that kind of feeling like I want to be a Washington publisher you know you get all these people like Rupert Murdoch and so and so they, they they may own TV stations all around the country but they want to have that cred of being a wash oh, I run a newspaper in Washington I have journalistic roots in Washington and I think that's what Philip Anschutz was looking at with the with the with the journal with the examiner and um, Hey, you know, he billions of dollars, and I guess, you know, it wasn't worth keeping it going. I don't know. Yes, I'm sure he had the revenues and stuff to keep the journal or the examiner going for as long as he wanted to do so. But what do you say about that? So, goodbye, examiner. 
Uh, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I really think of those 87 people that work for the Examiner. One of them would be a really good replacement for Betsy Rothstein over there at Fishbowl, DC. You think, you know, one of the, one of those, one of those 87, one of those, maybe one of those gossip gals there at their, their gossip, you know, you know, one of those gossip gals there, the, uh, the Examiner gossip page. You know, they might just be the perfect replacement for Betsy. So. <laughs> There may, you know, are you losing any seven jobs? At least we got, we found one new job for somebody there. <laughs> Thanks for watching Dave TV, second edition for the uh, 19th of March. Uh, live long and prosper.